Hi there, Pisces. Welcome to your April 2019 love reading for single people. It's Raina. So what I wanted to clarify here is that this reading is for people who are looking for love. Not for people who, and I'm talking about looking for new love. Not for people who are looking for an ex to come back into their life. I just had a comment from somebody on with one of these various videos in this series who was saying, this isn't true. I want such and such and such person back. And I have made videos for all of the signs uh, with relationships for April. So that's more uh, that's more appropriate for that scenario if you're looking for an ex um, to come back or something like that. However, um, please understand, this is a general <laughs> YouTube reading. Don't take readings so seriously, mine or anyone else's. Um, just have fun with it. Look at it as spiritual entertainment, and that's a better approach. If some things in the in the reading seem to be true to you that's awesome that's always fun so anyway i i've had to restart because of outside noise and okay i think the train has finally left it's only like the train was still there okay the heart of the matter is the three of wands and this is a card of expansion and this could also involve career expansion and travel and so this may have something to do with other areas of your life where you are uh, doing very well career-wise uh, for Pisces the 10th house of career is where Jupiter is currently transiting in Sagittarius so that's that makes sense to me you've had uh, Saturn transiting this house in Sagittarius in in the past in the recent past so you your career might be on fire <laughs> wands are fire signs unless this is a fire sign person that you have recently met and you're very attracted to that could certainly be the case but i think this is a personal growth for you and um and it's an actually a very positive forward looking kind of a card in the past position we have the devil card this card connects to um, uh, Capricorn, I, I was going to say Saturn, Satan, um, and um, really um, the devil card represents lust and uh, materialism, which is a form of lust itself, lusting after material riches and not being happy with what you have and never being satisfied. You know, when you think about addiction, it's the insatiability of it that causes the problems because, it, 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 you know, just... It, it, it's not about using alcohol or other substances of one's choice, but the obsession with it, the compulsion of it, or, or, or a sexual relationship, the compulsion of it, because that becomes um, an over an overwhelming uh, focus in one's life, and sometimes it becomes the only focus when it's at the end stage. So the point is, is that you may have come from a relationship that was based on lust, and you're looking for something more out of life. That's what the Three of Wands represents. The higher message is the King of Swords. Now, <clears throat> the King of Swords is um, a card of having, to me, ultimate discrimination. Isn't it funny that the word discrimination has become a bad word that is associated with um, bigotry? Discrimination means that you're able to discern Judge for yourself what is beneficial or not in your life. The King of Swords is a card of of it's 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 a double masculine card, but because it's swords, there is an emphasis on the mind, and it's not about your emotions. Okay, and of course. 
What is Pisces? A water sign. Pisces has a tendency to get swayed by emotion. You're very sympathetic to other people. And this can, and you're also very impressionable, where you, uh, because you're a water, a mutable water sign, so you take on the environment around you. Water conforms to its container, right? So because of this, because you're so fluid, sometimes it can be hard for you to have a core self, to have a sense of who you are. Neptune can, your ruler, can be very, um, it can create a lot of confusion and delusion as to, because of the fantasy element, maybe you want to be seen a certain way or you want to, to feel like you are this a certain way, but you get confused because other people especially those who are devious enough to know what a softy you are, can push those buttons very easily and can guilt you into things and manipulate you. So sometimes the King of Swords gets accused of being kind of cold and, you know, overly rational, not emotional enough. But some people need this quality desperately. And it's not about being mean and cold. It's about... Um, knowing when, where you begins and somebody else ends. With Neptune, everything is one. We're all one with the universe. And while that may be true in certain, in a certain context, it's not, nothing is ever always true. It's always like this and this to me, as far as I'm concerned. It's not either or. We're one with the universe, but we're also individual souls. And to me, that's not contradictory. Um, it may be hard to kind of wrap your brain around. But we, we came here as individuals to live individual lives. So there's something that you need to be to the world, Pisces. And if you get caught up in a relationship that is ruled by the devil, that is going to be much less likely to happen because... You, you're, you're probably going to get quite, um, you know, swallowed up by another person's negative energy. And that's the other thing, too. You have to watch out for, for other people's, you know, their, what their mood tends to be like, because you can very easily get influenced by other people's bad vibes. So try to... Stay, stick around people who are positive in nature. You know, for the most part, we all have our days, don't we? I know. I know I've had a few in my life. Okay, so the card that crosses you is the Five of Cups, and this is a card of grief. I mean, I don't even have to tell you. You can see that there's that sense of sadness. And, um, that this is a card uh, uh, that crosses you now. I I can't remember because I've been I've done this reading a few times. If I mentioned that I had gotten a couple of cards, uh, death cards in other readings that made me mention if somebody has been a widow or widower, and I've actually gotten more than one person who has experienced that, and so. Even though I haven't got the death card in this reading, the Five of Cups could certainly be about coping with um, the aftermath of losing a partner to death. And, and all kinds of um, losses. Even if it was somebody leaving the relationship and you didn't want to leave the relationship. I want to say, obviously, death is something that is not done because of anything that you have done in the relationship so it's not it's not like a form of abandonment but in the case of if other people if if there's a situation where you were left by somebody in your past and it had to do with um you know they they fell in love with somebody else for instance even in that type of relationship 
uh, if you did not want that to happen, if you reflect on the relationship, you may find, in fact, that you were not compatible with this person in the ultimate sense. Oh, geez, I don't know why there's so many trains today. So the, the point that I'm trying to make is that you may still be hurting about a past relationship, and it could have happened 10 years ago. Don't, by the way, don't kick yourself if you feel like, oh, I should be over this by now. Because sensitive people tend to take things um, to heart. So I don't, I don't buy this thing of like, oh, that, if, if it's been X amount of years, then, then that means there's something wrong with you. I don't think there's wrong, anything wrong with people, unless you've just completely shut down. But if you are looking for love now, you still may have fears based upon a past love that, that didn't work out, that you felt abandoned or uh, still in some kind of mourning. Uh, that's what the Five of Cups can be. So that the death uh, scenario definitely would be in play. And in some cases, you may not be ready to date, um, especially if it has been fairly recent. They say that men tend to jump into relationships uh, more quickly after a death than, than women do. Um, and so sometimes that desire to just be coupled may be real, but it may not be emotionally sound because it, you know, the person may find that they just can't go through with it, even if they start dating somebody, that it's just too painful. And so respect your own grieving process. Obviously, if you feel um, Pisces that it has been a number of years and that you are experiencing an emotional blockage, you may want to talk to a professional who is willing to explore this with you or a life coach, somebody who can help you get out of that rut of um, negative thinking. Um, but in general, I do believe that sometimes it is for the best, especially if they have fallen in love with somebody else and you are feeling like you're not good enough. You will find that if you're honest with yourself that you probably weren't compatible with that person. And it, but it does take being willing to look at the nature of the relationship and, and seeing it for what it really was, not what you wanted it to be. What is coming in, and this could be the advice as well, is the temperance card. And this, I've been getting this card too. The temperance card, one foot in water, that's the spirit, and one foot on land, the earth, the earth element representing the practical side of life. I was mentioning with another sign that I think it was Sagittarius that, um, and this, by the way, could mean if you have a thing for a Sagittarian, uh, that might happen <laughs> because you do have that as a centerpiece with the Three of Wands. I don't know if it specifically pertains to Sag, but it is a fire energy. Um, with the Temperance card, uh, as I was explaining to an, to another sign that I did, uh, there is, you know, everybody knows about having that sense of connection on a soul level. A lot of people understand about falling in love deeply and feeling like emotionally connected, spiritually connected. But with the practical side, the land um, that the angel is also on, I do think that this is a thing that this is really, I mean, I'm talking about a long-term relationship here, um, is that there has to be this sense of like both parties on the same page or at least willing to compromise when it comes to how do we deal with money? How do we deal with, um, you know, some people have a real hang up with money and according to, I don't know if this is <laughs> just one study or not, that the, 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 the thing people, couples argue about most is money. And so if that's true, 
And I wouldn't be surprised if that's true because that is such a hot button issue for, for all of us, especially if people have a lot of negativity around money. They can either be very fear-based about holding on to it or kind of repelled by money and they just waste it. They're just mindless about it. And both of those are extremes, obviously, but you get like one person in the relationship who is one of those extremes and they can just have really a lot of problems um, when it comes to talking about money and dealing with money. So it's, um, and you know, it's, it's really kind of sad because I know how that feels when you hardly have any money and you're like trying to account for everything. So it's, you know, it's not a good place to be at. And it can make you feel stressed. And just the stress alone can cause you to get in more fights with your partner. Even if you have like um, a wonderful relationship overall. So having, you know, when you go into a relationship, having that sense of like really getting to know them on all levels what do, what kind of attitude do they have towards work um, and things like that that can make such a difference in knowing whether or not you're compatible with somebody instead of finding out <laughs> after the fact right and the outcome is the hierophant which is a card that is very traditional and conforms to society and is actually connected to marriage and also religious tenets so um, the beliefs that guide people, especially as it, in this reading, would relate to marriage. So um, maybe you're going to marry a Sagittarian. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of half joking, but you never know. The point isn't that because I don't like to be, I'm not a fortune teller. And that's not what this is about. This is about like just bringing up things for you to think about. And if you're looking for, and marriage to me doesn't even have to be um, legal marriage, although in this case, it probably would be because it's something that makes the person feel like they are respectable, you know, like they are doing something that is within their church's doctrine or just what they think is the right way to live. And this is also a card that connects to Taurus. So this could, you know, I was mentioning temperance and then I said Taurus. Um, unless it's timing and maybe it's during the the time when Taurus, there's a new moon in Taurus in May that you meet this uh, Sagittarian, who knows. But in any case, It sounds to me like you're looking for more out of life than just friends with benefits or a person who promises a lot. You know, I think the devil, people sign on to the devil because it promises so much and it delivers so little. And it actually ensnares the person in a negative spiral. So... I just wanted to uh, bring that aspect up, um, but it's it's definitely I think for you a time of transition um, of well I would say of growth more than transition and being able to leave the past behind. I think uh, water signs too. Memory is such a big thing, you know, imprinted on their minds, and you might have a really good memory, Pisces and that is a double-edged sword because if you're remembering sad things, that's no good. That's not going to help you to rise above whatever is going on. We, we don't, the past is gone. Let's put it that way. And even if it was something that was heartbreaking, understand that life is eternal. If there's somebody that you're missing, a parent, another loved one that crossed over, maybe when you were a child. I believe that you're going to see that person again. 
I really do. And uh, that no one ever really dies. But that doesn't, I know that doesn't stop the desire to see them in the flesh. But I have found that the people, when they have crossed over, they become more real. It's kind of this interesting phenomenon. It's like when they're here, they're not as real to me. And then it's like everything that they were about becomes very defined when they have left. And I think part of it is because their energy has be become, they've joined with uh, their higher self. So they're more than they were when they came here. Okay, <laughs> off on that tangent. Um, so anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you would like a personal reading, uh, the link is below. Wishing you all the best in April. Take care. Bye.